To defeat an enemy, you must know them. Not just their battle tactics, but their history, philosophy. To the Chiss Ascendancy Podcast. Hello, 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 and welcome back to... The Chiss Ascendancy. Episode 58. 5-8. Five, we made it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, uh, uh, yeah, the uh, hillbilly with a mullet is back. I screw both you guys. And I knew what episode, what it was right off the bat. It was a 50 day. Uh, and today we're going to do a little news catch up. Uh, and then a little Galaxy's Edge mustard. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I just got my kids back in town from visiting my, my mom, their grandma. So my dad is overflowing right now. Um, so uh, a couple of news things right off the bat. Obviously, Bad Batch. Comes out May 4th, starts streaming on Disney+. Plus. So, obviously, we knew that was coming, but uh, pretty exciting news. And, um, I just feel so much closer now that we're in, what's May 7th? March, Yesterday's the 7th? Yeah, March, March 7th, 7th, yeah. So, less than two months away. Mm. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Have you been watching WandaVision? Mm-mm. Dude, it's so funny because people are like, oh, my God. And I'm like, I don't, dude, I don't know why. I don't Here's, care. It's, uh, the whole season's out, I think. I, I'm actually a pretty big fan of Marvel, um, right? But I don't know why I don't care. I don't know. I've heard it's really good, and I'm sure I'd appreciate a lot of it because they did cool stuff, like they brought back the, uh, the comic accurate costumes for Scarlet Witch and for Vision. I did see that. Um, I mean, uh, maybe make a show called Wolverine Vision, and I'll watch. <laughs> <laughs> they're talking about. <laughs> I think they're talking about using WandaVision as a bridge to bring the, the mutants X-Men into in. MCU. Oh, please. So that would be freaking sick. They w- she would be the perfect bridge. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she would, actually. You know uh, why? Is because in the comics, she's Magneto's daughter. Correct. Yeah. Correct, correct, correct. Uh, so, Bad Batch is coming he out. He also has a different daughter named Lorna. She's green costume, and she uh, has the same powers as Magneto, so she's OP. Oh, you know what? I remember seeing a uh, cartoon about that. Yeah. Uh, so Bad Batch is coming out. I'm excited for that. And a son. Um, Quicksilver. Pietro. Mm-hmm. And then uh, also there's some new news on the Kenobi front. Uh, supposedly, um, man, I don't think, I can't remember her name. There's a actress from, she's she's most famous for Game of Thrones. Um, and she is actually, uh, somehow related to Pedro Pascal's character in Game of Thrones. I think she's his mom sister. or sister. sister. Um, I've never watched a single episode of Game of Thrones, so I have no help here for you. I am too scared to start at this point. I think yeah, just, it would be, it would be a big commitment. I think I'll just hold out for the rest of my life. One day I'll die. <laughs> okay, the act- actress name is uh, Indira Varma. Yeah. I'm sure and, you're saying that right. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> uh, but I've heard, I know Adam was talking to us about he had heard rumor that she may be playing Ventress if they were, because mm. it's, it's already for sure they're doing flashbacks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it would be cool to kind of get a little bit more attention and see you and McGregor's perspective on that weird flirty relationship that Kenobi and Ventress have. Yeah, what if it's a big flashback and he's turning on going, ugh. What would be cool is if they kind of used that to talk about the Dark Disciple arc that never I was got put on say, film and we got to see who cares about Ventress, Quinlan Voss. Yeah, I was going to say Ahsoka is the bridge to Thrawn in The Mandalorian and Ventress is the bridge to Quinlan Voss in the Kenobi series. That would be Not sick. to underscore or to like underwrite the importance of Kenobi because he is my all-time favorite Jedi and maybe even Star Wars character, but I do love some yeah. Quinlan Voss. But I'd like to of, see some live-action Quinlan Voss. For sure. I think The way I think of it is uh, I was showing you guys, uh, shout out to 
SWTVC, the Instagram page that's dedicated to the vintage collection. But they did a cool, since it's March, they did a cool March Madness thing where they put out good work on their part. They put out, you know, 64 figures that people want to see made. Mm-hmm. And you did like your bracket like you would do for the NCAA tournament. Well, uh, there were ones that I like this character more, but I have toys of this character already. Mm-hmm. I know that have not been updated, but I'd rather get my first ever heavy Mandalorian over a newer Ben Kenobi. Does that make sense? So mm-hmm. we ha- we have so much Obi-Wan already that I'm excited for the Kenobi series, but I would be... I don't I, I don't want to say that I would be happier to see Quinlan Voss in live action than I would to see Obi-Wan again because I'm very excited oh, to see no, Obi-Wan. I, I'm going to cry real tears. But what I'm saying is my excitement would be very, very high yeah. to see well, we more never of Quinlan. To, I mean... It's similar to Boba Fett. Like, right. we've seen... We've seen Boba Fett already, right. but we needed to see him in all of his glory and well, splendor and, that I predicted. And after they tied him back to, you know, being to Mora Morrison, seeing what, you know, he looked like under the mask and kind of tying that all together. Yeah. Uh, the part of it for me is that that character in the background was never meant to be Quinlan Voss. You know what I mean? So it was just kind of an after the fact thing. So right. technically speaking, we've never seen Quinlan Voss on camera, and that'd be a really exciting thing for yeah. me. Yeah, he's, he's only canonized what if they just made jeff bridges really tan and jeff bridges <laughs> <laughs> played quinlan was hey you know what we won whatever bro that's you just know. like uh, your opinion man well we know for a fact that he survived order 66 from mm-hmm. the vader comics there's a list that he's showing to um either the emperor showing to him or he's showing to the grand inquisitor i, I can't remember which one but it's basically a list of high priority Jedi that mm-hmm. they're hunting down. And when you translate the Arubesh, you see names like Yoda, Obi Wan Kenobi, and Quinlan Voss is on that list. Mm. And he's never been confirmed uh, dead. And uh, so I think it'll be really cool to see them again. I always wondered where he ended up, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's the kind of. Because he guy... left in such a dark place. Yeah. I think he came back pretty strong but he did go through a lot of heartache right and imagine like falling in love which is already a conflict of interest Mm -hmm. you know as a jedi and then falling to the dark side becoming dooku's apprentice trying to redeem yourself then the woman you fell in love with dies right and then right after that everyone else you know dies right or you think they've died you know what i mean it's just a pretty crappy situation yeah so I can definitely see it driving him to the outer rim. Yeah, I would love to see that. I don't know. Get just get confirmation on that, right? You know what I mean. It's one of my biggest question marks as far as what we still have um, unknown in Star Wars. Yeah, uh, and so that's really exciting. I'm excited for the Kenobi series. And then another thing was uh, they're trying to make things overlap, which is cool because you have the newer in what stuff. Sense? Uh, well, you have the newer stuff where. Um, the Mandalorian seems to be overlapping with the Ahsoka series and the Rangers of the New Republic and mm-hmm. ultimately the Big Bad in this seems to be What do you think Thrawn. they're going to do with the Rangers of the New Republic now? Uh, my guess is that now that Cara Dune exploded into thin air, uh, they'll probably... I've heard that Hera Syndulla will be mm. the main leader of... Mm. Here's my problem. <laughs> Here's my problem here, okay? It's a strong way to start this segment. Um, Or here's my worry. (laughs) I guess that's a less aggressive way. Here's my concern. Is that... Okay. You can only... We saw this in The Mandalorian. Twi'leks are supposed to be like super beautiful, super attractive. Hera is... You know, she's cute in the cartoon. I don't know how much you can really judge a cartoon. But the thing is, when we saw a live-action Twi'lek in Mandalorian, she was repulsive, in my opinion. I think so, it had way more to do with the character portrayal than it did to do with like the makeup. Yeah. Because that did not do it for me. Yeah, all this. Yeah, I don't know what the frick that was, but yeah. whoever's what the, interpretation what the freak that was. was that? Yeah. I don't know. And no French accent? Yeah. It's always been French it like that's the thing. It's always like the Ryloth, it's always been a French Dude, accent. I guess it just reminded me I guess of... Hera is kind of like American accent, so it's yeah. not universal, but I would much rather no, but she... tolerate a French accent than freaking, like, trash British. Yeah. Well, here's the thing is that... That's like the redneck accent of British accents, what yeah. she was putting on. I want a day gone <laughs> night going down for a pint. Dude, it was like freaking... What's Air... <laughs> 
<laughs> right around time for vacation. Time for a bit of arty marty. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jeez, Gromit. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> what it reminded me of when they were like doing their stupid handshake uh, is shout out to all the Redwall fans out there, but that really cringy Redwall cartoon. Whenever these two uh, rats knew each other and they like bumped shoulders and then did like a secret handshake. And I was like, what is this? Secret handshakes among the rats? Camaraderie. It's friendship. Anyways, it was just, it was like, it was just so weird that it was like, brother, sister. I don't know. That's my least favorite Mandalorian episode to date, probably. Yeah. Uh, It's the very bitty bottom of the list. So, yeah, Range of the New Republic, supposedly, unless Jon Favreau. Flexes that infinity gauntlet that he definitely has the the you know what's in a in a vice at, over at Star Wars. Uh, Cara Dune won't be back, and so Hera will probably be the main character of that show. All that saying, those are kind of overlapping in the new era. Mm-hmm. I've heard rumor that the Obi Wan series and the Cassian series may overlap in the pre Episode Four arc, um, because there will be talks of obi-wan talking to bail organa who also talks to cassian and then ahsoka may appear in those because she's fulcrum from rebels Hmm. in the early rebellion it's a nice spaghetti we've got here yeah i like it i like because i trust i trust um favreau and filoni and those guys to to overlap it but keep it nice and neat uh so that's just a couple of newsies I'm excited about. Uh, I'm excited for Bad Batch. Some more cartoon stuff. We got a. Uh, we got to see what Finnick Shand is going to look like in that show as a cartoon. Oh. A uh, very brats looking version of uh, Finnick Shand from The Mandalorian. Big old lips. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I'll see if I can find it. I'll I just assumed that's what happened, based no. on your description. No, wait till I show you. Okay. Uh, let's see, Finnick Shand. A bad back. All right. <laughs> All right. It's, it's it's really kind of silly looking. It's it's like you know it's a cartoon or whatever, but but um yeah I mean I get the idea that she's supposed to be younger or whatever, but it's how just much silly. younger? Plastic uh, surgery younger? Feels like the wrong kind. I don't know what that means. Like people have plastic surgery to look younger. Just saying, it's kind of a backwards way to de-age her. Yeah, I could see what you mean. They're, they're heavy on the eyeshadow there. Yeah, and on the lip filler. Hmm. I saw a meme where they posted that picture, and it was uh, a screen grab from Godfather. It's like, look how they massacre my girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can take back over. Uh, but it's not that bad. It's not as bad as no, I No, 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 no. It's just, it's just silly. Um, I thought of like an actual Bratz doll. Like that's where my mind went. So it was like. Dude, that, that would be kind of like, you know, that would be kind of taboo though, because it would be kind of an Asian caricature of, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't know. I think there's a middle ground that you can strike. No, yeah, for sure. I'm just saying a Bratz doll is Before like. Before it becomes an approximation of that Chinese mouse from Rescuers Down Under. Hey, can we talk about how every time you turn on an Amazon Fire Stick nowadays, that Coming to America movie trailer comes up and it looks terrible. I don't like when a trailer plays anyway. I'm just in my living room. You know what I mean? Yeah, I need to absorb, especially on Netflix, I need to absorb these Mormons that just killed each other. (laughs) I don't need to go to the next trailer about Meat Eater. (laughs) I was gone for a week. I have so much to talk about. Uh, But yeah, so... The reason I was gone, thank you guys for handling it. I, it was, you know what was fun? I got to listen to the podcast as a fan because it's so vain of me to go and be like, well, what do I have to say about the thing? <laughs> so I don't, I, I scrub to find the funny parts, you know, like balls on neck, Quarren jokes. I saw Quarren at Galaxy's Edge and I was like, balls on neck! <laughs> Did he turn actually, around? Did he know? No, it was actually, a, it was a shadow Mm. Uh, when you're getting on star tours and they're like, it's trying to, it's trying to show you like these people going through the airport, you know, but bro, you could see them from a mile away. Hey, did you know that Disney actually manufactures the animatronics that they use? They don't outsource it. So like that, that Hondo robot, 
Yeah. They actually designed and built that in-house. Dude, it's, he they're looks They're supposed to be fantastic. some of the most realistic and, like, advanced, uh, like, robots yeah, no, that, for sure. that are out there. But what, Disney's making them. That's you the know what part. I was impressed by, and I guess this is a good segue, um, I what we kind of wanted to talk about a little bit this episode was uh, just my time at Galaxy's Edge. And, of and course, like, by we, I mean you. <laughs> well... Our other kidding. option was a book that I haven't finished yet. So, um, you know, hey, if you guys haven't read Into the Dark, I would I recommend it. Um, the front half it's a lot of setup, but the back half that it pays off, in my opinion. It's like marriage. I really enjoyed it. I'm not married. I'm, I enjoyed the book. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but yeah, I just, I thought it'd be cool because there's a lot of folks. You know what? I was very excited and surprised that we were able to go on this trip for our fifth wedding anniversary um and i really just thought i wasn't gonna go to galaxy's edge for like a decade and be like too, yeah uh so anyways <laughs> i do think it'll be really cool to go as at the sh- all the guys me you and adam on the show because i think it'd be cool to take our time and do that but um it was real neat and uh so i guess i'll just kind of walk you through the day uh so yeah We'll just do that. And one of the coolest parts is that it's really, I know this is kind of like really bougie of me to say, but it's its an experience. Uh, so can you, they don't. Can you do a better job of, of conveying to me what an experience it yeah, is? Yeah, well, if you would let me like finish with the no, sentence. Yeah, I'm just is. like, yeah, I need, I need a more dramatic sound no, if you're going to go through and say, it's an experience. I need like, you know. Yeah, like, well, I was totally getting there. No, I mean, like, I'm just saying the setup itself. Yeah, I was joking around about you know? people when they say it's an experience and you like, know what they're talking about. Yeah, but I'm saying about. you should, you know, if you're going to do it. What are you talking about? If you're going to try and use that as your setup, you got to be like, it's an experience. You know what I mean? You can't just be like, you know, it's an experience. That's I was, I was lampooning the people who say that. That's why yeah, I was not saying, as expressive. If you're going to do it, own it, is all I'm saying. But I wasn't owning it because I'm making a joke about the saying. You see? <laughs> That's what a caricature is. Anyway. I know what a caricature is. They get you fired nowadays. <laughs> I'm staying clear of the path. I'm not doing any more impressions. I'm not doing any more voice impressions or facial expressions. So is this an A-wing? I'm straight face. I don't even know what that is. You don't know what an A-wing is? No. Uh, so, But uh, all jokes aside, whenever people are like, it's more of an experience, I'm like, what the crap does that mean? Uh, but the thing that's so cool is it's a completely immersive mm-hmm. uh, section of the park. Um, and we actually went to Universal the day before. Did you talk to any Jawas? No Jawas there, sadly, I know. Uh, I One thing that I was sad about is I feel like if COVID wasn't a thing and there wasn't so much... Um, they're already wearing a mask though no i know i'm just saying i there was no i feel like before actors walk through the park and talk to you and like take you aside and try to like uh interact with you mm. and nobody does that but everybody's a little that most of the characters should be wearing masks right right but i don't know they just don't want to quote unquote endanger the, the crew so that's the only thing that stinks is that is what that they say endanger the crew that's well, yeah, basically. Uh, but it's but I, it's really immersive, so it's really cool because we went to Universal the day before, and um, there's this. You really have to kind of know where you're going, honestly, unless you have a map in your hand to get to uh, Diagon Alley, mm-hmm. and you can kind of hear like the soundtrack of like bricks being shuffled and moved around, mm-hmm. and there's like a three part wall where you walk behind one, so it looks like a flat wall, but you walk behind, and that's how you get into there. Mm. Very similar was Galaxy's Edge where you walk through this longer tunnel and then it's like the tunnel's, you know, pretty dark. And then once you get into the light, it's like your eyes adjust and you're in Batu. So it's a pretty cool concept. And when you walk in pretty much immediately on your right, uh, is this a wing and, uh, dude, my wife Macy was such a champ because she doesn't give two craps what ship this is. She doesn't care what how fast it is. She doesn't care what fleet it's a part of. She's, and these aren't as trusty as the X wings, but they are a lot faster and they have more maneuverability. Yeah, so she doesn't she doesn't care about like yeah if I'm doing Star Wars D and D the entire day like giving all the specifics. But she was asking questions because she could tell I was just like bursting with information about every single thing that we saw. And that, the uh, way you said that reminds me of the billboards for KSPJ that say bursting with hope, and I don't know how I feel about that. 
particular description. I don't trust KSPJ anymore because they're putting out positive vibes now instead of prayer and worship. <laughs> Bursting with hope. Oh, the first time I saw that, I was driving alone at night. I stopped listening to KSJ laughed. when they were bursting with Chris Tomlin. I laughed for like five minutes. Too much. Anyway, back to the A-Wings. Show me more. So she was like, what is this? And I was like, oh, glad you asked. It's an A-Wing. My favorite color, actually, is this maroon on white or whatever. And I was like, I said pretty much what you said. I was like, not very good in the shield department, but very fast. <laughs> uh, so here's a Resistance X-Wing. Super dope. Uh, something that was really cool is they do the beautiful job of all the Star Wars, like, random bullcrap. So, like, who even knows what this freaking thing is? Yeah, all those little canisters. Yeah, that's that's totally Star Wars. You just have a freaking... That's a Yeti cooler? Yeah. So, there are things throughout the park that I took pictures of that I wanted to we'll keep talk to you all about. keep your cold for up to 72 hours. Uh, so, here's the blue... Um, even in space? Yeah. Yeah. That's how Leia was saved. She just flew into a Yeti. It's vacuum sealed. <laughs> Airtight. Uh, here's me in front of the Cebu. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was a deep cut for three people, maybe. Thanks. Okay, so uh, this right here is you're looking at the front of the market. So, again, COVID protocols, which look at this rebel right here. I was about to say, I wonder if she thinks you're taking a picture of her and you're going to show everybody who's not wearing a mask. That's funny. Get them police. <laughs> so uh dude you had to wait in the that's line that's her officer the one you had to wait in line to get into the market and then once you're in the market they only allow one party per store at a time so you had to get in a line to get into the market and then to get into the different stores it's like so like me and my wife were a party so if there's somebody in there we gotta wait till they get out so we can go in so it's only like one or two people in the store at are a they time. rushing you or nope i would explain all the clear pictures of the wampas later yep Man, I'm sure everybody behind you in line was pissed. Uh, dude, I, I didn't care. I was at Galaxy's Edge. I was taking pictures, you know? Uh, so this is the front of the market. Again, all the extra stuff is what makes it Star Wars. Like all those freaking cables yeah. and bullcrap. Um, and then over here to your right, kind of out of frame, is a bunch of wood carvings of cool stuff. Uh, so the first shop that you can go into is basically a shop for animal stuff, like creatures you can buy. Uh, I was talking to the guys before the episode and I was saying I need to go back with just like a blank check so I can buy like four puffer pigs, crap like that. Uh, if you're not familiar with the puffer pig, My it's... dog had a chew toy that looked a lot like that one, but it was more like an earth pig. Mm. You love that thing. I death. think this one squeaks too. So, yeah, it does. Uh, but puffer pigs are from uh, Star Wars Rebels and if you get them all riled up, they basically do like a puffer fish mm -hmm. and expand. So that was cool seeing those there. Um, <clears throat> they have a Dianoga in a little cage, it looks like. Yeah, this feels to me kind of like a throwback to, um, from a certain point of view, for A New Hope. And they yeah. talked about the transportation of the Dianoga. Yeah. Uh, that'd be, some, I mean, an incredibly deep cut for your average patron, but... Yeah, some Rathtars were cool. Uh, Banthas were neat, very furry. And each of these is freaking like 20 or 30 bucks. This was not for sale, but it was cool. And there's I can my, see the reflection of your jacket here. You see my here. Tennessee shirt here. Uh, and then this was pretty cool. They had, so throughout the park, they would have like life-size so of Star Wars animals. a toy for the Loath Cat. This is the Loath Cat itself. I know it's hard to see. Yeah. So there's a sleeping Loath Cat. I thought it was so dumb that it was asleep. I wish it was awake or like, you know, some kind of moving. Look at its disgusting rat hands. Yeah, pretty gross. Uh... So the Loath Cat's asleep, and he has a pet Porg, it looks like. Porg, the Porg is just screwed. There was a... Uh, In the background, you can see you can buy uh, a Kowakian monkey lizard. I was watching Pawn Stars, and a guy brought Ooh. in his own art. It was like in 24 karat gold, but one of the figurines, he like made only demons art. And one of the figurines had like a bird's foot attached to it, like a real bird's foot. Oh, my God. And Rick was like, what the freak is this? <laughs> and he's like, you know, it's a bird foot. And he's like, you just find it on the side of the road? And he's like, yeah, pretty much. And he's like, I don't want it. Dude. But that's what it, <laughs> that's what it looks like. They do have kind of gross feet. Yeah. Uh, so what was crazy about like, the Kwaki uh, and monkey lizards. Oh, go ahead. Speaking of uh, mouse films from that you can find on Disney Plus, if you go to the great mouse detective, it looks like uh, Radigan's hands. Mm-hmm. It's scary after he rips off his suit and they're in the clock and 
Doesn't yeah. even care if he looks like a mouse anymore. It also kind of reminds me of that scary bat from the beginning of the movie. Mm. Eh, that guy. Uh, the the monkey lizards are kind of crazy because they have the tan one. Mm-hmm. But they also have this really crazy, like, tropical colored one. Like a, Yeah, they all like suck, a, all of them. Yeah. Um, so here's the other side of the market. Pretty dope. And then uh, they have these speeder bikes that they're not for sale, but they're it's as if you were going to like a car lot and they have a miniature car. So there's it's Hans cool speeder. speeder. Yeah, that's Hans from speeder. Solo. Um, and then this middle one kind of looks like Dirge's speeder from back in the day. Mm. I'm sure it's not a direct cut, but it looks a lot like it. And then the top one was kind of cool because it looks like... It looks pretty Tatooine, like yeah, Jabba's Gifts. I was going to say, it almost looks like it's an individual speeder built out of the concept of Jabba's Sail Barge. Mm. Okay, so Watto's Toys. Nice. This is really cool. Um, when you first walk into the store, they have like a little screen. So again, it's like a full experience because every time you go into a short... Uh, a short... Every time you go into a store, rather, uh, the person working there goes, Oh, hello, traveler. That's what they call you wherever you are in the park. Um, so they say, hello, traveler. What, what can I get for you? And everything is handcrafted, kind of like this this thing of Watto. It's like, you know, bullcrap put together. Uh, so here's a cool one of those, like, wooden dolls. And this is the only Thrawn swag they had in the entire park. So, of course, I got it. I have it in my house. I meant to bring it. So, but up here, like, everything's carved out of wood. So over here... So, okay, see that in the window? It's just a, a backlit thing of, it's not necessarily Watto per se, but a, uh, I forget what species he is. But anyways, they're playing in their little office or whatever. But all these things over here are like hand-carved, like that's a metal hand-carved at wooden droids and such. Um, they had wooden sail barge. With all the characters, some Naboo fighters. Here's some Jawas. Toy Darian. Toy Darian, there you go. <laughs> Appropriate um, for a toy store. And then uh, here's a really cool, look at that freaking sand crawler. All out of wood. And then here's the, if you look right there, there's a Jawa. And then the, there's all the droids they try to sell to Uncle Owen. Oh, nice. nice. So just like little details like that throughout the park. They're just off the wall and like Astro, super over the... faulty motivator. Uh, this was a joke for Samuel because they sell clue horns, yeah. which is the worst short story in Star Wars history. Clue horn cantina caper. Mark, I love you to death. You killed me with that segment. You killed me. He, I bet you if we could get that him. Chad, that Chadra fan voice murdered me. I love everything else you did except for that one thing. I think we could get him, you know, get a little honesty juice in him. He'd tell us he didn't like it either. I wouldn't. Maybe he was doing it out of spite. He's like, you know what? You're going to make me read this hour and a half story. Okay, uh, I forgot to get this before I left, so I'm mad at myself, but it's a a Sabacc deck, yeah. I'm sure I can buy some online. Uh, Chance Cube. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yep. That's cool. Rigged, of course. You should have got those for Chance. That's funny. Uh, This looks like it's from Jakku, and they had all kinds of stuff like this. It does look crappy. (laughs) Uh, Here's another speeder. Oh, nice. This kind of looks more like what Luke would drive. And uh, and then to your left, there's a really dope uh, Treadwell droid. And then this was one of the highlights for me because that is a Corellian patrol trooper speeder. Yeah, very and, cool. And uh, a lot of people that I've talked to that have been there did not notice that. I guess they just kind of missed it. Chumps. Um, so when you walk out of the market up to your left, you come around the corner. Uh, and this Love is... Uh, yeah, this kind of looks like the Jedi... Um, old style art that you kind of see around Jetta mm-hmm. from Rogue One. Some really cool stuff. Uh, I guess these are statues of old force users. And uh, it's an airbender back there. I tried to I tried to move any and every crate just the to see that's Nickelodeon. But they're all they're all tied down. I was like, what if I could take this with me? Um but then you go into Doc Undar's Hall of Antiquities and you these are props that you can buy. But the cool thing is it's like a basically a two story uh, kind of a domed hut. And the first story are things you can actually buy. And then the second story or behind like the quote unquote counter mm-hmm. are things that he has that are like collectible within the universe. So things that you can't buy, but they're really cool things. So this is a Jedi temple uh, guard mask that you could actually buy for 130 credits, 130 credits, not too, too bad. What a so steal. they had a replica of the, 
uh, silver square necklace that Leia wears at the end of A New Hope when they're giving the medals to Han and Chewie and Mm -hmm. Luke. And it was made of some kind of, you know, sterling silver or something. Twelve hundred dollars. What? Yeah. And people were buying stuff, dude. Like a custom lightsaber uh, is like 200, 250 bucks. To get a replica is basically the same because you're getting like a, an FX lightsaber or whatever. I'm sure Disney makes it themselves because right. everything you buy in the park is from them. Uh, but people, I saw people, is like $200 for, you know, Mace Windu's lightsaber or whatever. And I saw people walking around and it was like, it came in kind of like a case almost like a pool cue would mm-hmm. have. And I saw people walking around like double handy, like both of them, like, you know, or three. <laughs> so, dude, people are just shelling out, you know, $500, $700. Yep. Um, and it, so this is the cool part of this. I could probably stay in this store for freaking forever because there was so much detail throughout the shop. So you've got an I IG unit. Nice Jedi ropes down here. Yeah. And, the, and they have them from extra small to like triple X you can buy. Um, For the Jedi on the go, or the Jedi on the stay. (laughs) My 600-pound Jedi. Uh, So I can't tell if this is IG-11 because I couldn't get far enough away to get a good angle, but he has those... This hut is Force-sensitive. He has those bandoliers across his chest, so it kind of leans that way. Maybe an IG-11. Of course, there's a bazillion of them. Um, And dude, like the Scarif Stormtrooper helmet there and the clone, uh, Phase 1 Clone Trooper helmet, stuff like that was everywhere throughout the park. Yeah, TIE Fighter pilot helmet up in the top right. Yeah. So the rides... And the chest piece, that's cool. The rides are very, very sequel focused. Like even Star Tours, I don't know. You remember Star Tours from Mm -hmm. back in the day and it was was like Darth Vader or whatever? Mm -hmm. They've updated Star Tours to where you're trying to escape Kylo Ren in the First Order. So... I'd be way more scared of Vader. Yeah. But it's crazy because Kylo Ren is the bad guy of that ride, Rise of the Resistance. Flight of the Falcon is not really uh it's like you're just controlling the Falcon, so it's more of uh we're running a heist with Hondo. There's not really a bad so guy I'm per se. Flying the Falcon? Yep. That sounds like the best ride. Uh it's definitely the most uh you're interacting. So it's you really get to fly the Falcon. I'll show you in a second. Um, but like those the rebel guns so up good. there. And then this was super cool. Yeah, the, dope. the beast heads. I don't know. What I don't know what that top left is. The top left or bottom right are. I remember looking them up, but I can't recall. Um, I think that might be general Grievous's Cape there on the left. You see that? Mm. So that's freaking sick. I'm sure if you offer them enough Imperial credits, they'll <laughs> let you buy stuff. Uh, a couple of Gamorrean weapons here on the bottom and then some skiff guard, Stuff on there in the top, and then in the middle there, uh, right here, you've got a a Wookiee shield, and then a Tauntaun head in the middle. That's a Corellian hound. That's what Moloch was trying to chase Han down with, and then the Nexu there on the bottom left, uh, which I take every back everything I already said about how it's not that scary because in person that head was like three feet wide. That's a furry spider. Mm-hmm. There's a close up of those helmets. Here was the piece de resistance. A full stuffed life size wampa, and those hands, I kid you not, are like this wide. Just freaking two feet wide. And the claws look like those raptor claws that that guy just keeps holding on to in Jurassic Park. Freaking sick. No one Disney, they probably went out and bought real Velociraptor claws just to put on their puppet. Uh, but that was super cool. I wish I would have. them from Universal. You're right. <laughs> we'll just buy Universal today. Uh, I can't recall what pilot helmet this is. Uh, maybe like a resistance a wing or something. Uh, so that's doc Undar, uh, and he's the guy who owns the shop and he's an animatronic character. So he moves and stuff. That's cool. Uh, okay. See if you recognize this guy here. You know who really likes Ithorians is freaking drew Carpishan. There's like yeah. an Ithorian character in all his books. Are you talking about Snaggletooth back there? You got a Snaggletooth head, head there. Um, and then that little thing that it's resting on, that's like a symbol that's on his outfit or something. I can't recall. Uh, you talking about the blaster? And then the Mandalorian yeah. pulse rifle Mando's and helmet. his helmet. And that looks like a little mythosaur. Um, yeah, man, like an adaptation. That's like mythosaur. a stylized yeah. Yeah, Mandalorian thing. All these cool guns. And it's cool because back here, he actually moves these chips sometimes. He's oh, like, nice. ching, ching. And then I can't tell what cane that is, but it might be like Poggle the Lessers. 
something like that. So he was cool. He was moving. And then these helmets were freaking oh, sick, sick, dude. Uh, Dang, um, that's like pre-Android Grievous right there. This is a, yeah, he, it's a Kalish Warlord's helmet, which is what Grievous would have worn. And then I think this is Second Sister or something similar. Yeah, Can you tell? Be. I, not in that and I not. have no earthly idea what this thing is. It looks like some kind of an ancient Sith helmet. Whoops. I have no clue what that is. I'm coming up blank. Right? And then, of course, the Royal Guard's a classic. So all these things were just on the wall. Like like I said, Macy was like, okie dokie. And I was just like... It looks you know. kind of like a dark version of the Jedi Temple Guard helmet. Right? I wonder if it's something... Is it like a Sith Acolyte helmet or yeah, something like maybe. that? Just so cool. And then uh, I believe this is a, a Sith chalice or something like that. Well, it has the Empire logo. Imperial on logo on it. And I think these are the... You, right at the very, very far left, uh, I think those are those Sith statues that Palpatine has throughout the uh, Republic. Hmm. Oops, wrong way. Um, here's some cool things. Uh, Imperial badges you can buy, and you can move the pieces around. Hmm. This was one of the coolest things in the shop. Life-size General Grievous helmet. I don't know. I don't think there's a way you can put it on, but it, it says looks mask. Like it has a voice changer. So on maybe it too. you could. But 325 credits. And that thing's like this, dude. It's pretty huge, which of course makes sense because Grievous is massive. Here's a cool artwork. 400 credits for a Thrawn artwork. And uh, this was this was one of like 45 or something. So it's it's pretty rare. And uh, here's the first time I cried in Galaxy's Edge. You come around the corner and you see the Millennium Falcon life size. I didn't like shed an actual tear, but I did tear up and get a little bit emotional. Um, we took this picture super quickly and then got in line for the Falcon ride. Uh, and that's a cool resistance um, cargo ship that's at the top of Batu. And every see how the engines are lit up there. Every once in a while, it you know it sounds like it's boosting off or something. And when it does that, on the other end of the park, there are stormtroopers at their little station or whatever. And when this thing makes a sound, of course, there are speakers on the other side of the park, and it sounds like a ship's taken off. And when they do that, the stormtroopers look up like, you know, something's taken off. Similar to like in episode four when the Falcon takes off and the sand troopers all look up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is cool. This is some stuff that you are helping Hondo... Um, Appropriate? Yeah, and uh, inappropriate for others. So some Dagum, Isis, uh, freaking nukes over here on the left. Uh, some cool guns. And then this one here is similar to like what IG-88 has. And some really heavy stuff. This looks like brains. Spice. <laughs> uh, so that's cool. This is in his garage, basically. Uh, some stolen Stormtrooper armor. And, okay, I want to talk about this for a second because nobody else was saying anything about this. And I was like, hang on a daggum second. So there's a bucket, right? Mm -hmm. And the bucket is going into a scout trooper helmet. Mm -hmm. And at the very bottom of the scout trooper helmet is a funnel. Is he making moonshine? He's Yeah, this is Hondo's space hooch. This is so cool. I was like, dude, what a cool touch that Hondo would absolutely do some space you know, rum going on. It reminded me of when they had to make uh, whiskey for uh, The Great Escape, and you can tell it's good because they can't breathe. Mm. And they're like... <laughs> they got the potatoes. Yeah. So, yeah, he's making a little space hooch in the... This is why you're waiting to ride. There's Hondo and his droid. I like the little paint job that his droid has with the scary teeth. Mm. And uh, it's... The voice acting is great, and like you were saying, the animatronics are just off the wall, dude. They're freaking amazing. And... <laughs> He, he he has his own mannerisms like he would in real life. He's like, I've got, uh, I guess you'd call it an opportunity. You know, just like that. It's just really super cool. Uh, and then here's the Falcon. So obviously I'm freaking excited out of my mind that I'm running. They're, they're, they're rushing you because the COVID protocols allow for, normally there would be someone in every seat. Mm -hmm. If there's a group of two, it's just you two. If there's a group of four, then they'll do four. But I imagine even if it's a, just a group of one, they're just breaking up into parties. So you might have to take up the whole four or six seats, just you. Um, so uh, so like if the three of us were to go, we'd be able to ride all the rides together because we wouldn't be limited. 
but I saw them breaking groups up and they're freaking out and crap like that. Uh, so there's two pilots to the Falcon. I sat on the left. Macy was on the right. The left guy navigates left and right, and it's natural flow. And then the person on the right is navigating. Oh, it's inverted. And it's inverted. I bet she's freaking out. So here's the thing. Part of it is automatic, but part of it is responsive to you. So you can tell when it's like, here we go. But if it's like, all right, here we go. Don't, don't forget. It's inverted. Like he's like talking to you, you know. So we take off and it's like, you know, the easiest thing about a smooth transition is just being casual. Don't get in trouble. So I'm doing left and right and I'm like avoiding stuff. And as soon as the Falcon's in our control, Macy just goes up, which is actually down, and just crashes. And Hunter goes, what are you doing? And so that was funny. So she goes, oh, my God. Because when the people are talking to you and they're like, okay, so it's inverted. So don't, don't, don't mess it up. And they're just like rushing because there's so many people at the park. Mm-hmm. But they're doing like a third of what they could have on the ride. So they're just having to crap you out, you know. So that was super cool. Right before you take off. Uh, Hondo's like, uh, we'll talk about the split when you get back. Okay. Just don't make a mess. Uh, we were able to get all the coaxium that we needed nice. without dying. Uh, and this was the first little thing of droids you see. So here's a freaking Imperial probe droid yeah, that's that dope. they've salvaged. And you don't realize how massive that thing is. Mm-hmm. Like all put together, it's like eight feet or something. Uh, and so that was really cool. Here's when Kylo first came out. The funny thing about when Kylo comes out of this ship one thing that's a cool little fact His chest is, is way too small to be a um, driver. Well, also, he's he's probably about six foot. He should be about three or four inches taller. Um, but this ship was going to be in Colin Trevorrow's version of Episode Nine, and that was going to kind of be what uh, Kylo rode around in. But when he quit the job and JJ took back over, they had already purchased, built, fabricated, and produced the plans and the model to have this at Galaxy's Edge, and it was already open by the time JJ took back over. So this ship is supposed to be in episode nine, but it's not, but they still use it. Um, I think it's called the, uh, uh, as it's not escort. It's like the Kylo ship. What's the old show that used to be on HBO. That was really big. It's a group of guys. What do you call that? When, when someone's famous? Yeah, I think it's, it's something like that. Entourage or Echelon. I don't remember. It's, it's But it's like, it's a group of people going with you. I can't remember the name of the ship. Anyways, so that'd be funny. The First Order Posse. Uh, so when the stormtroopers come out, people are like, oh, that's neat. And Disney employees are going, all right, travelers, make sure you maintain a clear distance between you and the next party for COVID-19 protocols, blah, 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 blah. And when the stormtroopers are out there, everybody's like, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back up. Dude, when Kylo Ren walks off that ship, nobody gives two craps what the Disney employees are saying. And like 300 people are like, just like pressed up against this fence right here. So somebody was talking crap to Kylo and was like, you're not the real Supreme Leader. Yelling at him something, you know. So all the lines are pre-recorded. So choked him. Killed him. All, all the lines. You can totally tell all the lines are pre-recorded. They have like little pads on their gloves that if he does this hand moment uh, movement, then the mask knows to say a specific line. So if it's like, get out of my way, he'll do like that. And he'll be like, move back. So he can't really talk crap back to the person specifically. So he just walked over to them and stood directly over them for like three minutes and just stared at them. And everyone in the vicinity is just pissing their pants because Kylo Ren's just standing over this guy. And I remember being like, that guy's got to get out of here. Like he's in severe danger. So that was crazy. Um, Here's some cool droids. uh, And you can buy... Uh, the three and three quarter inch scale of these droids in the shop and they're the only place you can get them and the the figures are actually made by Disney directly instead of Hasbro so that's pretty cool this yellow droid is super dope um, this is Saw Gerrera's 2B 21B uh, medical droid and uh, this is cool because this is Skeleton Astronaut's favorite droid so I was like oh bro your droid's here uh, they also had a K2 unit freaking huge yeah, he's like, like cut eight, off at tall. like yeah, he's like cut off at the knee in this little cage because it's the same size as this cage, uh, but still mega wide, just super, super uh, imposing. Uh, Chewie and Ray were there. The girl looked surprisingly uh, she does like, look like Ray. Daisy Ridley. And uh, Chewie waved at me, so that was really cool. Nice. And dude, it's kind of, it's okay. I like Ray, but everybody there is like, there's a few people, you know, young kids that are like, hey, Ray, but 99% of people are like, Chewie! Hey, Joey! 
Uh, so that was really cool. I think when COVID protocols aren't a thing, there's like a little fight scene here. And Ray and Chewie uh, escape and like run through the park trying to get away. Of course, that's not the thing. Uh, so this is outside of Star Tours. They have the ATAT there. That's been there for forever. So the next ride that we get on, and it's the last one that we did for the day, because there's three rides at Star Wars, is called Rise of the Resistance. Now, Rise of the Resistance is like the most modern, most up-to-date, most everything um, thing that they have right now. So because the lines are so like cut back and there's only so many people that go at a time, they're doing, instead of just having a line, they're doing a virtual queue. So you have to wake up and the first virtual queue is at 7 a.m. And you can do it from anywhere. You don't have to be in the park to do it. So there are locals that I think are getting on and trying to see if they can just get a space and then they'll buy their ticket for the day because they're not going to buy their ticket if they can't get on the ride. So at 6.59, I'm just pressing refresh, 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 and I clicked join and it went to the next page and I clicked join again and it took me literally about four seconds and I missed it. That's how fast the queue goes because people are just they're getting in. So I was pretty bummed the first half of the day and at lunch, I was watching – before we went on the trip, I had watched all these YouTube tutorials, how to get on the ride. Like, what do you need to do? Wi-Fi, no Wi-Fi. So I heard, use your phones. If you're going to Galaxy's Edge here, you're, I'm going to help you get on the ride. You get on your phone's cell service. Find a place in the park that you have as mid, like if you have four bars, get all four bars. Don't be satisfied with three. Um, for a lot of people, it's in front of the Indiana Jones ride. That's where I went. I had all my bars. Uh, and it says walk away from other people so that the cell tower is not like crowded from that area. Like you're the only person in the, you know, 20 or 30, or 40 foot vicinity and get your, you know, data or whatever. And then the second queue, you have to be in the park and it's at 1 PM. So at 1259, again, I'm like, scroll, 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 refresh, refresh, refresh. And I'm at Indiana Jones. I'm doing all my due diligence and I click join and we get in and it was freaking I was like sweating bullets. So luckily we get to go on this ride. It's called Rise of the Resistance. You're a recruit. And when you get there, uh, they're like, okay, cool. Well, we need your help. And then all of a sudden, you know, the first order arrives, typical Mm -hmm. Star Wars stuff. And so they say, we got to go. We got to go. You got to get on this ship with us. So you walk out and it's like a smaller version of like what the Tanta V4 looks like. And you get in and they have you separated by groups. So you get in there. The, the door shuts. Uh, there's a cool Mon Calamari animatronic that looks super real. And he turns around. He's talking to you. And he's in that cool, you know, fish swivel tank thing. And he's like, we got to get out of here. And so the ship takes off. Here's the crazy, the first crazy thing is the ship takes off. It doesn't, you know, you feel like you're like, oh, here we go. And then you're adult, like, you know, sarcastic mind, you're like, all right, woohoo, you know, we're not really going anywhere. Well, then you're taken over by the first order. You're captured, you're pulled into a tractor beam, and they're like, oh my God, what are we going to do? We're in the belly of the beast. We're in the middle of a Star Destroyer. How are we going to get out? And I was thinking to myself, it's really going to suck if they open up this bay door, you know, oh, I get it. They're going to open up the bay door on the other side of the ship, and that's where the Star Destroyer is going to be, right? Or they're going to open up the bay door that we just came in through and they're going to walk us through the same pavilion that we just came through and we're going to walk into a Star Destroyer. I was like, this is, I don't, I want to feel like I'm really having this experience, right? The door opens. I don't know how they did this. I don't know if they spun the ship around. I don't know what the freak happened. But when the door opens, so you come in through a pavilion similar to like where I'm standing right now. It's just outside. You can see the sky, everything. When the door opens again, this is like 30 seconds later and you can tell the ship has not moved that much. The same door opens, a first order officer walks in and you're being arrested for you know crimes against the first order and the Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. This is where you are inside. It's like a couple hundred feet wide, 50 foot deep. There's like 40 or 50 troopers right there. They're all moving. So the, I assume they're robots, but they're like moving and talking to each other. You know, but they're basically rank and file. And this is a screen. This is not a picture in the back. It's a screen that the space battle is happening. And there's like TIE fighters and Star Destroyers moving around. Um, And this is what the hangar looks like, dude. It's a full-sized hangar. God knows how many freaking feet tall that is. Life-size TIE fighter attached to the wall. 
just like in The Force Awakens when Finn and Poe are trying to get away. That's cool. Um, and so they're like, the only thing that sucked, okay, I get COVID and protocols and all that stuff, but everybody has a freaking mask on. So I'm like, okay. This guy comes in, and he's got a mask on, and on top of the mask, he has a face shield, which Disney Parks won't let you just wear a face shield. They don't think it counts, so I don't know why this guy had both, but whatever. So he's like, all right, come with me. Don't talk to anybody. We're going to put you in a holding cell until the until the Supreme Leader can talk to you, and he will get the answers to your rebel base. And I was like, if they would just let me talk to Kylo, I'll tell them whatever they want to know. Yeah. Uh, so you're going this way, and... Uh, you see this cool droid and this little transport there on your way out to the to the place where they're going to hide you. Uh, and so this is the last picture. But um, you get into this cell, right? And uh, you hear them, and it's, it's that narrow cell, kind of like a triangular shape, kind of like what he talks to Ray in. And you hear them being like, the Supreme Leader's on his way, and uh, he's going to come in here, he's going to talk to you. So I thought they were going to have a actor come in there with us and I was like, dang, that's kind of crazy. They're going to have some big dude come in here playing mm-hmm. Kylo Ren. Before he can get in there, the back wall explodes and splits open. And people in uh, resistance gear with the guns and everything come in there. And they're like, let's go. We have a limited window. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So you get into uh, this ship, right? And they're like, all right. So we've reprogrammed these first order droids. They're going to get you to uh, – there's a turbo lift right around the corner. And we're going to take you to where you need to be. And so they're like, well, you need to get in and buckle up, hurry. So the cool thing was if you were able to get on the ride, it's cool because you just experienced it with your group. You don't mm-hmm. have to listen to anybody else talk or anything. So it's just me and Macy, and we're in the front seats of this vehicle right here. We buckle up. They take us out, and they're like, all right, the turbo left's to your left. And there's no tracks. So you're in this – this vehicle moves like you can see it. And there's no there's no tracks that it's on. There's no like clicking like when you're on roller coaster. It's like tick 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 and it, you can feel the wheels and stuff. Mm-hmm. There's no there's nothing like that. It's a it's a you can see the tire tread, so it's on tires, but there's no humans driving it. It's got to be a pre programmed whatever, but it adds to the experience because it feels like the the droid is driving your car. So you go around the corner and there's a freaking first order probe droid, which looks really cool. And it's like, oh, we can't go there. We got to get out of the way before he sees us. You turn the corner and you're like, let's see what this leads us to. And that's when you turn the corner and you're driving into this hangar where there's two, you know, they're probably not 70 feet tall, but they're very, very, you know, they're close. They're very, very large first order ATATs. And so you're like, oh, frick. So you go through, and I was wanting to stop and be like, hang on a second. Let's look at these ATATs. And, uh, but you can't. So you have to go between this one's legs. And as you get through there, you finally get to a turbo lift and it takes you up. And it's like, no, this is a bad idea. We're supposed to be going down, which is funny because it's kind of like a Obi Wan Kenobi reference. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you get there, uh, it, when it takes you up and the lift stops, you're face to face with uh, with one of these AT-ATs. I think it's this first one here, and they have first order AT-AT drivers. So it's cool to just see the little changes in that armor, you know. And the chin guns do like this towards you, and they're like, "No, no, no, go, 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 get out of here!" And they start shooting at you, and they have lights that you're not looking for, mm-hmm. and so as they shoot at you, lasers are coming through like at you where you're at and the back wall is exploding and i assume it's like led panels or whatever but it just looks like this fire is spreading on this panel and you're like oh frick we gotta go it's like so immersive and afterwards macy was like i don't know if you noticed this but when that atat started shooting you were absolutely ducking down into the vehicle to get away from the atat and i was like it's an experience babe so we get out there and then um you're kind of trying to go through this hallway and you go into, you know where uh, Vader talks to the bounty hunters and there's that little pit there? There's a bridge. You're driving, yeah, you're kind of in the pit of the bridge and there's an animatronic of Kylo and an animatronic of Hux. And I was so impressed that Hux, a human being, looks just like Hux. Like he looks just like a real person. And he's like, uh, the prisoners have escaped and he says, um, he says the resistance is outmatched and outgunned. There's no way they can beat us. And Kylo says, you underestimate their conviction. Raise the shields. And he said, I don't 
what for? There's no one here. And Kylo goes, he turns to Hux and yells at him, now! And then as there's a huge screen behind the bridge that mm-hmm. looks like you're looking into space, and as he yells, right now, do it! Uh, all the ships from the Resistance show up. Zoom, 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 zoom. And then Hux, you know, oh, shields up! You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he goes, also the prisoners have escaped. And Kylo goes, how brave. And he's like, why do you say that? And he goes, because there's nowhere to run. And he turns and he's looking at you. And you're like, oh. And uh, he starts walking down the bridge this way. So the little droid goes, woo. And you back up and you're going. And then as you're driving at the end of that hallway, uh, lights or you hear, Thoom, and he jumps down there. And then uh, a real blade uh, goes, you know, and he starts walking down the path towards you. So you back up and you finally get into the turbo lift and the door closes and like, all right, down this hallway, no big deal. We'll get to the escape hatch. So you get in there and as the elevator starts going down, Mm -hmm. you feel this thud on the top of the elevator and you're like, oh, that's cool effect. You know, Kyle's on top of the elevator. Then his freaking lightsaber comes through the roof and is like, he starts cutting a hole in the top of the elevator so you're like, oh, we got to go. So then you go and he grabs you with the force. And he's like, you're not going anywhere. Could you move? You're going to tell me. No, you couldn't move. Like you're just physically? like this. And the, and, the, and the car's doing that. The car's going. Mm-hmm. So you're like, oh, frick, it's happening to us. And the only way you get away is that the resistance, you know, a, a ship comes by and breaches the hull. And so you back up and, and stuff, again, huge LED walls that you can't really tell are LED stuff is flying out of the window. So it looks like stuff's like, and you and Kylo leans forward, kind of like what he does in episode nine and you get away and you hear him go, no, and you get away. You finally go down into this escape pod and you escape. It's like a freaking 10 minute ride, dude. And it's the most like, like I said, it's the most immersive. Like you feel like you're there thing. Mm -hmm. Definitely worth the stress and the weight. Um, but galaxy's edge was super dope. Uh, it was, (laughs) <laughs> that guy. <laughs> That's me after this episode. Um, but just a really cool thing. And, uh, dude, I really do think that if there was a way for us all to go someday to just, like, experience it together, it would be so sick. I feel like I did. Yeah. Well, that was the idea. Uh, but, dude, I think the thing that you would like the most, Samuel, is just, like... The prospect of building my own lightsaber and attaining a Jedi Temple Guard mask. Yeah. Yeah. It's super cool. Um and I think that when COVID, you know, goes away, eventually, hopefully, sometime, um, being able to, even though the lines will probably be crazy, everything in the park you need a reservation for. Mm. And I didn't realize some of that till we got there. So even just to buy blue milk, it was like you need to buy your blue milk online and pay for it online. And when your order on your phone says it's ready, you can approach the booth because they're all about distancing mm-hmm. everybody. Um, but stormtroopers were there, like. Seeing stuff like that was really cool. So there were interactive characters so that could be, huh? No blue milk. I did. I was able to get blue milk, was but I good? wanted to. It was the blue milk is kind of a, uh, it's like a coconut slush. Mm. Um, it's it's thicker than you would think milk is, and then they say the green. I did not get green, but the green milk, which I don't know. I guess it was the idea that I thought it was coming from that one walrus titty. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> I didn't want that one. I saw Lou go when he drank it, so I wasn't into it. But they say that one's try. that one's like citrusy. So interesting. Yeah, I did not get that one. Um, but it was really dope, dude. It was really crazy um, seeing people that were. I I saw one person come up and go, uh, "Nice Thrawn shirt," and they could tell what I was. I don't know, it's just you never have stuff like that happen in like Barnes and Noble. You know what I mean? And so that was really cool. But uh. It was a really dope experience. I would love to go, the three of us, and I would love to go. I've heard Anaheim is, is, uh, I don't know if it's bigger or something, but I heard it's different. And so it would be cool to, to check those out. But it was really, really dope. I think that you could, it's kind of like if you're a Harry Potter fan, you could be in the Harry Potter section of Universal for forever. Mm-hmm. It's not a very huge part of the park, but it's just... The experience of you can go into Ollivander's and look at the different kinds of wands and mm-hmm. you can like you can get three different kinds of butter beer, 
you can get, you know, it's, it's that same thing, but for Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And so it was cool to see the, the Harry Potter stuff, and I love Harry Potter as well, but knowing, obviously I know a lot more of the minute details of why this is this way or why what droid is this or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought that they did a great job of Universal. It was kind of like, here's what it looks like in the movie, so we're going to duplicate that. Galaxy's Edge was like, what would people do practically in a city in Star Wars with a broken droid or with, you know, what would they use this thing for? So one one thing there is there's an astromech droid that the top is broken off and it's a grill. A guy has a grill on it and you can hear like fire from inside. It's obviously a, a track, but somebody's cooking like, you know, a burger or whatever on, you know, a little some bantha steaks yeah so stuff like that i thought was more to me that was more thought out than universal which was like here's what it looks like on screen so we're going to do that again although universal did have a giant dragon that breathed fire every 10 minutes so that was cool um but anyways it was super dope um i was really excited i would love to go if i lived there i would totally go and like you know outfit or costume or whatever and try to interact with people uh COVID was made it easier because wait times weren't as bad for mm-hmm. different rides, but it made it harder because you don't get the full, full experience of interacting with some of the park cast and things like that. And they were very, very, um, you have people that are walking around the park and their whole job is to tell you to make sure your mask is up. That's their whole thing. They're just walking around with a sign, have your mask on. Um, so that was crazy, but it was really, really cool. Um, just seeing like a life sized, Wampa seeing a life-size Tauntaun head on the wall crap like that was just over the top So if you're in Orlando, I encourage you to fork up the money and go um, And Anaheim's still closed They're they're shut shut because California hmm. so But I know there's just like millions of dollars out there to be made and It's funny because the parks are obviously like more enforceful, uh, you know, enforcing mm-hmm. more rules and stuff. Well, because uh, Florida's open right now. Right. So it's kind of funny because they're doing all the right things and saying all the right things to make sure that people are happy that there's social distancing and masks and stuff. But you know that in those closed rooms, the board is like, when the freak is California going to open up? Galaxy's Edge has been shut for six, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. You can tell that they're, they're thinking about that. Um, you can tell because everything there is a zillion dollars a cup of blue milk that much blue milk eight bucks Jeez. and it's like when am i ever going to be in orlando again at galaxy's edge yeah you know what i mean you're already there so just pay the eight dollars for it was but, it at least caffeinated huh how much protein was in it was it nutrient rich it tasted nutrient rich yeah <laughs> but anyways it was really neat it was really cool stuff i hope we get to go yeah, as, a, as a crew but it was cool. There was more that I that I didn't even get to do that I wanted to do. The leg had no powers. So my wife was there and she was, I was like, all right, let's go to the Toy Story side of the park. And, you know, she could tell I could just sit there the whole day and just look at crap on the wall, you know. But it was really dope. So I don't know. I thought it would be fun to do an inside scoop on what it's like. Price, uh, props to Macy, though, for sure. Yeah, dude. She stuck it out and uh, she was hyping me up. Dude, we were like... Yeah, Macy's a hero. Yeah. She's she's like that for everything, though. Like, yeah, we'll go is. to the zoo, and she'll be like, Wolf, what is that? It's a lion. It's a freaking... The lion doesn't care. It's like licking its balls, you know? It's just sitting there, not, not paying attention. You know animals at the zoo are? They've seen a million people. They don't care. And she just, like, hams it up for them. So she was really cool to be around. Like, I tried to do the same for her. It's just not the same. You know? I'd be like, wow, babe, look, there's Buzz. And she's like, mm-hmm. But she is just... Is that Woody? Yeah. So she... Dude, she just puts 110 into it, man. She was like, that's Ray. That's like all that kind of stuff. Uh, when I came around the corner and you see the Falcon for the first time, it, first of all, it's way bigger than you think it is. It's like... I think I think I, it's exactly as big as I think it is. You Okay, so <laughs> in my mind, when you walk up to it, it's probably not, not too high above your hand to touch the bottom of it. It's got to be two feet higher than your hand. Obviously, I'm, you know, I'm not an NBA player, but like it's it's pretty high up there, and uh, it's funny though because the ramp is short. 
Like when you're walking, you don't get to touch it or go up the ramp or anything. But as you're walking past it, the ramp, it looks like, why is that ramp so small? Because like every time the Han or anybody goes up, they're like, um, but it's pretty neat. It's pretty cool, dude. So I don't know. I, I would like to see, uh, I was surprised at the lack of um, the Mandalorian wasn't like a ride or anything like that. Uh, but dude, when I say that they have Baby Yoda merch, freaking anything i bet you they have like baby yoda like adult diapers it's anything and everything dude they had baby yoda ears that were just the ears they had baby yoda ears that was a whole like a beanie with giant ears coming off of it they had baby yoda like anything and everything you can think of socks space uh, balls the lunchbox <laughs> dude it was just like that space dude. balls the flamethrower <laughs> it was just like that bro it was just like that but it was really neat and so i'm excited uh rumor on the street is that in 2023 universal is gonna add uh, right around the corner lord of the rings theme park mm. so that'll be sick but anyways i could keep going forever because it, yeah. it was really crazy so anyways if you guys missed me, I talked the entire hour this time. But there you go. We'll talk to you guys next week. May the force be with you. And remember, somehow <clears throat> the only family you have here is me. <laughs>